gonna shake all the way in the dirt under me, yeah. I'm gonna shake all the way in the dirt under me, yeah. I'm gonna shake all the way in the dirt, yeah. I'm gonna shake all the way in the dirt, yeah. I'm gonna shake all the way in the dirt, yeah. I'm gonna shake all the way in the dirt, yeah. and welcome to Darts Coaching with Dynamite Dave. What we're going to do today is it's one on the mental side and what we're going to talk about today is there's not going to be a lot of sections to this one probably only two uh, just this one and a bit of promo stuff a bit of uh, promotion for Darts Planet TV and obviously the raffle don't forget the raffle if you want your tickets two pound a ticket purchase your ticket down here um, for the shop Viking Drakars, I'm um, uh, raffling them off. They're going to come with a couple of photographs, a few bits and bobs, a couple of goodies and what have you. Uh, I'm going to sign the flight, sign the box, etc. But get your tickets bought, two quid down there, well worth it. The 75 quid set of darts, so they're worth it anyway, even if you just want them to, to actually play with them. Um, two quid stake for a thing if you're getting a 75 pound set of darts, I think it's fantastic. Right, what we want to talk about is the mental side. Um, a specific um, topic that I want to talk about today is aggression. Is the way of using aggression, positive aggression and negative aggression. Um, now then what we'll do is we'll first time, first what we'll do is we'll explain what I mean. If you've watched the TV and you've watched the way that the dark players react, you'll see sometimes um, when someone goes for a double and misses it, you'll see a lot of aggression in the fact that they've missed it. When they're outwardly and aggressively decrying what they've just done, basically, missed a double. Sometimes it's when they've gone for a score when they've needed to get a ton plus to fetch them within striking distance of checking out when the other player is already on a checkout to put pressure on them. You see this quite regularly. You'll get the, um, the aggressive stance and what have you and doing that, I mean, We've all felt like that, haven't we? Especially if you've played these computer games, I think we've all felt like throwing the uh, controller at the screen when you get frustrated, and that's what negative aggression is. It's when you feel like throwing something at the screen because, you, because you, you're not achieving what you want to achieve. What that does is that thing that puts you on, it takes your, your PMA, something that you probably have heard of years ago, you might have even heard of it recently, PMA is Positive Mental Attitude. It's something that is absolutely vital. If you want to be uh, a top draw player, you've got to be able to go to places where you've never played before and be able to play to the best of your ability. The only way you're going to be able to do that is by having a positive mental attitude. I've had um, one in a thousand people asking me about why they can play well in the bedroom and then this is just a, a topic that, that just carries on and on. Why they can play uh, relatively well or very, very good in the bedroom what I call back bedroom heroes, and then when they go to a competition, they fall to bits. It's the same sort of thing. When you're in um, an environment where you feel safe, you feel comfortable, you feel confident, you perform. Then when you're going into a situation where you feel less confident, um, less um, able to express yourself, less, less comfortable, um, you probably feel a bit oppressed, to be honest with you. That is a good way of describing it, that sometimes when you go to these competitions and you've got some larger-than-life characters, which I am myself, anybody who's been to the coaching and what have you will tell you that, I'm a larger-than-life character myself, but you'll get those, and if you're quite um, new to it and you're a bit timid and what have you, then that can, finger that can play really, really negatively on you. 
So that's negative aggression and, and what happens with that is if you allow that to get on top of you what it does is it forces you down those very old things that we've talked about is the stairs. A little bit of a recap of the stairs is our, your ability, you've got your mental ability and you've got your physical ability. As you start to play darts and you get better and better at it you'll take a, a step up on the physical ability and then you'll take a step up on the mental ability then you'll become more confident and you'll take a step up on the mental ability which will drag your physical ability up because you've got that more confidence you've got more of that attitude I will hit the double rather than I've been trying for half an hour and I can't hit it and that's another thing with the negative and positive aggression as we go through this section it's that being um, a forward like a drive it's like pedalling a, a bike I suppose is the way you could say is when you're powering on and you're powering forward and you're and you like that and you're really trying and what have you and it's all coming out, it's all coming forward that is positive aggression negative aggression is when you're going up that hill and, you, and you, you're slowing down and slowing down and slowing down and then all of a sudden you get to a point where you think I can't do this and that's when your negative aggression or your negative attitude has taken over and it's starting to push you back instead of pushing you forward obviously the best way you can be is to be pu being pushed forward all the time unfortunately that doesn't happen we all suffer from that I suffer from it everybody does and it's not a matter of um, whether that's going to happen to you because it's as sure as hell going to happen to you without any doubt whatsoever it's going to happen to you the, pro the, the strength of your character and the strength of your game all depends on how you deal with that You've got to be able to deal with that in a positive way. I'm hoping that you have seen this with the way that I've dealt with the operation that I've just had. Um, I went into it looking forward to having it done. I, I, I was called a masochist and all sorts. People at work said to me, what? You're looking forward to going and having your leg chopped in half and then I have... Yeah, but it could go wrong. This could happen, that could happen, the other could happen. Well, yeah, that's all right. And an anvil could fall out of the sky tomorrow and hit me on the head, and that'd be me finished. It's just, you can't, you can't live your life like that. You've got, I believe that you've got to live your life on the front foot. Don't live it on the back foot. So I look forward to my operation. Me doctors, the occupational health people at work, the surgeon, everybody was absolutely amazed with the attitude that I had actually going into it. And look at me now. Just two weeks after having my knee implant, I'm back, well it's just over two weeks now, sorry, it's just over two weeks now, met and exceeded everything that they've asked me to do. Every one of the um, exercises, etc, etc, whatever they've asked me to do, I've done every single one of them and 90% of them have exceeded it. There's one or two of them where I'm still struggling a bit, but that was because of the complications in the operation where they had to cut a bit more of the muscle away. Um, well not cut it away but they had to separate it to make some more incisions or put more plates on or whatever it was that they had to do I'm not really sure but whatever they had to do they had to do a little bit more damage to my leg than they would have liked to have done and the, the, I'm getting there it's not far off now I'm not far off getting the leg absolutely horizontal anyway I'm digressing like I always do just to make a point but that's the, the negative and the positive side of aggression the positive side of aggression like I say going through the operation and what have you is driving through and it's this saying that I said in one of the old videos right you've got two choices in life of the way that you want to go you can either run away and hide or all your fears all your fear, everything that you face every day you've got two choices you can either run and hide, hide away from it or you can face it you can fight it and you can win and if you've got that attitude of face it fight it win it you will go a long long way in anything that you want to do in life not just darts but you, your darts this that will drive you on to become a better and better dart player so basically what you're doing is if you're in your back bedroom get out of it go and play even if it's the pub even if you think if you're under 18 either your dad or your one of your uncles or one of your older brothers when they go for a pint can i come with you on a saturday afternoon can i come with you on a sunday afternoon so I can, I can get on the dartboard and have a play. Once you start playing in front of people and you get to a point where you're comfortable and you're playing well, then you will get people who want to watch you. It's like me whenever I go out. Obviously now I'm not, 
I'm no superstar, don't get me wrong, I'm nothing like that, but in my local pubs, everybody knows who I am. Quite a lot of people like to have a game of darts with me and what have you. They know they're going to get beat, but they just enjoy it. And the thing is, is you get people watching you, you get people commenting, you get people... I've even had it where I've just gone in for a bit of a practice chuck on the way home from work and ended up it's been like a darts exhibition. Everything is a journey that you have to go on and everything's a journey that gets better and better. The further you get into that journey, the better you get, the more confident you become and the better player you become, the better outcomes you'll get in life, you'll get more jobs, you'll get finger, you'll get better relationships with people, um, people will be more looking forward to seeing you. The amount of people who shake my hand when I go into pubs and, oh Dave, oh, your, your videos are absolutely fantastic, they've done this for me, and my game's improved, and I get, get the odd naysayer. If it's constructive criticism, I don't mind it in the slightest. But when people are just being um, obnoxious or just trying to be smart, when trying to say that I've said things when it's quite clear in virtually every video that I've ever made, and yeah, I'll even say it in this one, everything that I tell you is subjective. It's up to you. If you listen, sit and listen to me and you think, that guy's got something, that guy's got something there, he actually knows his onions, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and have a go, I'll put my faith in him, I'll have a go and see if it works. And you just look at the, if you look over the hundred and odd videos that I've got, the thousands of comments where people have said that I've improved their game no end. They're the people that matter, not the 10, 15 or 20 people that just try having a go at you just for the sake of it. And those type of people mean nothing to me. Those things you probably see me. If you've been on the on the channel and had a look, you'll probably see that I go back at them with exactly the same gusto as they come at me with, or probably a little bit more. And just the worse they get, the worse I get, because I never back down. That's the, that's the probably one of the problems with me. I never back down, and I never apologise for anything that I've ever said ever, because if I if I don't mean it, I ain't gonna say it. It's as simple as that. So anyway, getting back onto digress from digressing again. Positive, positive um, aggression. This was something that I told a lad. He said he'd been off, he's, he's been on crutches like me, he's gone back and um, he was trying to go around the board. It took him 58 hours to go around the board. And I said to him, I said, next time you go and play, try this for me. Every time you hit one, so when you go to throw for one, when you hit one, celebrate it. Celebrate it. Even if, even if it's just, yeah like that as you do it don't mind nobody's going to hear you because you're in your bedroom so nobody's going to laugh at you you're just there on your own and all you're doing is making that engine start to spin faster one two three so you get three in a row yeah yeah i really enjoyed that it's fantastic that is and if you miss one that is your reaction if you can if you can be like that when you score, or when you when you hit a 180, you see him, and I tell you who I love for this is Gerwin Price. When he hits a 180, he's, he, he's, it's just, it comes right from his core, right from his core. And what that does is it's like, in the olden days, somebody whipping a top. You've got a top that spins, and you whip it, and it spins even faster. That's what he's doing. He's like, he's driving himself forward as he's hit that 180, and that what he's doing, he's going back there and he's, all his body is on a, on, on, on a, not on an adrenaline rush, but on the front foot, he's driving forward. Instead of coming back, he's going forward. And then when he comes to throw at the board again, he's got himself into exactly the same frame of mind. And this is one way where you can, you can't guarantee getting into the zone, but this is how you will be able to formulate getting into the zone more often. The more often you can get into the zone, the better you're going to play. And don't forget, that zone, when it's on stair five, six months later, that zone might be stair eight. Because what will happen is you'll step up and you'll be in that zone. What is your zone? Because your zone isn't my zone. My zone isn't Michael Van Gerwen's zone. People's zone is all down to themselves. And if you can get yourself into that zone where you feel like you're just looking at the target and you're putting the darts in it, and that's what I always say, don't throw the darts at the board, put the dart into the target that you're aiming for. Look at the target and put it in. Don't throw it at the target, don't, don't sort of like chuck it at it and feel that you're chucking at it. Feel like, in your mind, that you're leaning forward 
and putting that dart into the target where you want it to go. And that'll that'll bring your concentration levels up. Again, when you've hit when you've hit them, and I tell you what, I don't give a monkey's me if I'm in the pub or where I am. If I think if I do a ton plus finish or whatever, I celebrate it. Alright, I might not run up and down screaming like Gerwin Price does, but I always celebrate a really good score. I celebrate a good score and I celebrate a good finish. And that's what everybody, and you should do, it's, it's part of the game. Bringing yourself on to enjoy the game even more because it'll get you more involved, it'll make you more passionate about it. It'll give you that drive that you actually want to can su succeed and you want to win. Because when you've got that and that finger, that hunger takes over, then is when you think when you'll start to get to a point where um, one of the lads that thingy that I've coached in the past um, said to me a couple of days ago that he's actually starting now to get frustrated because he's clattering the darts into each other. And I said to him, don't get frustrated, mate. That means you're getting there. Because if you're clattering your darts, it means your grouping's good. Okay, um, just to conclude it, so um, what we've been talking about is negative and positive aggression. Negative aggression knocks you back, and it's that one where, as we've said, where you feel like throwing that controller at the finger at the, at the television, where you feel like slamming your darts on the table. Which, I, but that's negative aggression. Positive aggression is when you start to get that motor running, get your motor running, hmm? get your motor running, get yourself going, drive yourself on, uh, face it, fight it, win it. So whatever it is, if your thing, if you're playing in your back bedroom, you know the next thing that you've got to face is going out to competitions, tournaments or playing in the pub. So get out there and face it. Get out there, face it, fight it. So when you're playing, try and do everything that I've told you to. Keep yourself calm. Whenever you have a bad visit, you've got to learn to lose before you can learn to win. And that's another th part of this journey and this path that you will go on. You've got to learn to lose and take that negativity and turn it into positivity because don't forget it's all a learning curve you've got to learn to lose before you can learn to win right so, right, so let's go over into the conclusion where we're going to talk about um the giveaway and darts planet tv my mate gav he's done his magazine Uh, David Llewellyn, oh and sorry, hi Chris, some top draw info, great opinions. Here it is, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, it's a great mag, it's our issue two, it's 48 pages. Thank you so much to Ben and all of the team, there's a separate video coming out for that. Uh, it's absolutely stacked. If you're going to the Newcastle Masters this Friday, there is even a special section in there, so you can get the players to sign it for you. Gav will be taking whatever we have left with him uh, on our new DartsPlanet.tv magazine stand with our, our posh pull-up banners. Uh, look out for those who are really proud of them. Um, yeah, so uh, if you want to get one, make sure you order one now because when they're gone, they're gone. They, we can't sort of ring up the printers and go, oh, knock us another 50 up. It doesn't work like that. So make sure you get yourself sorted and, uh, uh, and get your magazine ordered. So thanks for watching Darts Coaching with Dynamite Dave, I hope it's been interesting for you. And don't forget lads and lasses, always, 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 talk to the hockey! Well lads and lasses, whilst doing the filming of this video, my leg has gone to sleep and so has half of my ass. So I may be a little wild. <laughs>